Jesus is questioned about fasting. The religious persecution that Jesus had to endure is undoubtedly one of the most heartbreaking aspects of his life. There is probably nothing that could be more wicked and cruel than religion that does not follow Jesus. Mark chapter 2, verse 18 through 20, Amplified Bible. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting as a ritual, and they came and asked Jesus, Why are John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fasting, but your disciples are not doing so? Jesus answered, The attendants of the bridegroom cannot fast while the bridegroom is still with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast, but the days will come when the bridegroom is forcefully taken away from them, and they will fast at that time. We read, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? It was common knowledge that Pharisees fasted twice a week. Luke chapter 18, verse 12, Amplified Bible. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all that I get. God is not against fasting. On the contrary, He encourages it. However, there is a season and a purpose for fasting in the life of a Christian. Fasting was practiced by those who followed John the Baptist, going without food for a while in order to focus their attention on God. The Pharisees, who were known for their extreme piety, would frequently engage in the practice of fasting. Although the law stipulated that this should be done once every year, the Pharisees believed that it should be done twice a week instead. They would try to make themselves appear as miserable, holy, and religious as possible because the primary purpose of their fast was for public display. Jesus confronted them about it at a later time. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, Amplified Bible. And whenever you are fasting, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they put on a sad and dismal face, like actors, discoloring their faces with ashes or dirt, so that their fasting may be seen by men. I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, they already have their reward in full. This actually shows us a good rule of fasting. Fasting is not for public display. It is for you and God. During this particular fast, the Pharisees observed Jesus and his disciples enjoying themselves, and they made the decision to emphasize the disparity between the two groups. They questioned Jesus about the disciples' lack of fasting and how it reflected their lack of commitment to religious life. Mark chapter 2, verse 18, Amplified Bible. Jesus provided an answer by referring to a wedding as an illustration. When people are happy and celebrating, they don't fast, they feast a lot. Can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? Jesus is the bridegroom, and his disciples are the friends of the bridegroom because they share in the joy that Jesus brings into the world. The Pharisees had misunderstood the fact that outward ceremony must correspond to inward feelings and reality. Even though there are times when being reflective and solemn is appropriate, this was a time for joy and celebration. When it became clear that the bridegroom would soon be taken away from the disciples, they began to observe a fast. They would feast heartily for the time being. Can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? By using the picture of a wedding, the bridegroom, Jesus drew a powerful image among the Jews. During the week-long wedding celebration, rabbis declared that joy was more important than observing religious rituals. In the days of Jesus, some rabbis declared that if the observance of any law came in the way of having a good time during a wedding, you didn't have to keep the law. You could just go and have a good time. Marriage feasts were times of extraordinary festivity and even of riot among several people of the East. Jesus' message was bold and clear. I'm not like the Pharisees or John the Baptist. I am the Messiah, the bridegroom to the people of God. Wherever I am, it is appropriate to have the joy we associate with weddings. We read, The days will come. They will fast in those days. Jesus was aware that his disciples would not always be able to directly experience his physical presence. It would be more fitting to observe the fast once he had physically left. Mark chapter 2, verse 21 through 22, Amplified Bible. No one sews a patch of unshrunk, new cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and the tear becomes worse. No one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the fermenting wine will expand and burst the skins, and the wine is lost as well as the wineskins. But new wine must be put into new wineskins. The analogy of a patch being sewn onto an old garment brings to light the inherent risk that comes with attempting to modernize an antique item. On the other hand, the same principle applied to wineskins. The pressure of the fermentation caused the wine container to expand. When fresh, unfermented wine was placed in an old, brittle wineskin, it was almost certain that the wineskin would break. 
we read, new wine must be put into new wineskins. He says we should not take a piece of cloth that has not been pre-shrunk and sew it to an old cloth. If we do, the new piece of cloth will shrink in the wash and tear the rest of the garment. The second illustration about wineskins makes the same point. Wineskins that contained wine had a tendency to get hard and unyielding. The old, hardened wineskins represented the Pharisees and their form of religion. They couldn't contain Jesus and his new wine. These illustrations shed light on the point that Jesus was trying to make. It is impossible to cram his new life into the molds of the past. Jesus traded fasting for feasting, mourning for joy, the law for grace, sackcloth, and ashes for a robe of righteousness, a spirit of heaviness for a garment of praise, mourning for joy, and law for grace. Through the centuries, old rigid forms could rarely contain the work of the Holy Spirit. Through the generations, God often looks for new wineskins because the old ones won't stretch any further. Jesus came to introduce something new, not to patch up something old. This is the crux of the matter with regard to salvation. Jesus does not abolish the old, the law, by doing this. Rather, he fulfills it, just as an acorn is fulfilled when it develops into an oak tree. It can be said that the acorn no longer exists, but its purpose is fulfilled in greatness. Worshiping Jesus, when rightly understood, is a celebration. We meet together to celebrate the risen Christ. We are not living in the days of mourning, but of rejoicing. Christianity is not a sob. It is a song. A personal and joyful connection with Jesus Christ is at the heart of the Christian faith. Let us pray. Father, I ask that you create in me a clean heart, and that you deliver me from being carnally minded. In Jesus' name, I yield to the refining fire of the Holy Spirit in my life, and ask that you give me grace to stay with your word, that will build me up spiritually and sharpen my sixth sense. I thank you for answers to my prayers. Amen.